play big and dominant. And the early headline today is the man in the middle, Efton Reed, taking the opening tap as a Demon Deacon for the first time. He's come off the bench in his first three games wearing the old golden black, but he starts today, and he wins the tip back to Boopy Miller. Underway here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Wherever you are, we wish you happy holidays, and we thank you for being with us today. A little Thursday matinee hoops here in the triad. Presbyterian will start off in man. They like to put a lot of pressure on the basketball. Not the biggest team, so you've got an advantage rebounding. And that guy we just talked about, his versatility, starting out on the wing, knocking down a three. Andrew Carr picking up where he left off. He was six for seven from the floor on Monday and wakes 88 to 59 win over Delaware State. Five Demon Deacons and double figures for the third consecutive game on Monday and the win over the Hornets. It's really nice to have a guy 6'10", 6'11", and can knock down threes consistently. His 11 three-point basket made. Something of a homecoming game for Presbyterian Samaj Teal, who spent a couple years starring for Winston-Salem State. Averaged nine points a game as a freshman for the Rams and 12 per game last year. Played an exhibition here at the Joel last year, and he'll get to the free throw line early with Hunter Salas picking up the foul. Really good young athlete from down in Farmville, North Carolina. Some of those state championship teams at Farmville Central in the past five or six years can get to the basket, run. You know, his, his role maybe expands a little bit now as, as far as what he's doing for Presbyterian. But he can beat you off the bounce, and it's a good start for him, especially coming back to Winston-Salem. For the Demon Deacons. Well, it's the same four that have been the same four in every game with Efton Reed making his first start of the year. Miller, Hildreth, Carr, and Salas. No surprises with that foursome, all of whom are averaging about 15 points per game. Yeah, Caleb Scott, thought he's going to have his hands full guarding Efton Reed. Carr at 14.9 technically coming into today. The other three, Hildreth at 16 per game, Miller at 17, Salas just a hair under 18. Looking inside, Efton Reed. Unable to make the clean catch because of Marquise Barnett. And that's one of the things that you mentioned, the fact that you've got four players averaging over 15 points a ball game. The versatility in this Wake Forest team, not depending on any one particular player. A lot of guys can get you going. So far, it's Carr. And one for Andrew Carr, elbow jumper, and the foul on Caleb Scott. Carr's got a quick five for the Deeks. Man, this is so easy for him. Watch the matchup. He's got size advantage. A little bump in the little screen. He steps out, catching the same motion, knocks it down, and the defender about a step late picks up the foul again. See how he kept the ball up right there? It's in the shooting motion. Bam. Really confident stroke for Andrew Carr. I did not think he'd get to 1,000 points today in his career, but you never know. He was at 964. Now he's at 970, less than 90 seconds in. Barnett, Teal, Harvey, Reddish, Roan, and Scott for fifth-year coach Quentin Farrell, who played for Greg Nybert at Presbyterian back in the mid-early 2000s. Reddish, Roan, drive and kick. Samaj Teal swishes the three. And it is... Basically, Andrew Carr six, Samaj Teal five here in the early going. Teal leading the Blue Hoes in three-point baskets made with 16, now 17. I told you the athleticism. Hunter Salas joins the scoring spree. Baseline drive going easy off the glass. Hunter coming off a 19-point game on Monday. Much better start for Wake Forest than what we've seen in some of the earlier non-conference games. We've started slow and then came on later. Air ball thrown up there. It will stay with PC. What does that say to you about a team when they consistently start slow, even if they often rally to win comfortably? Yeah, sometimes it's just a lack of focus. So you don't make a couple of shots. You don't realize the speed of the game. It could be a number of things. But today, I think because of the type of game this is, it's an afternoon ball game. It's getaway day. You've got to lock in. You don't want to have to work yourself into getting back in a ball game and trying to get a win. Jamari Harvey with a soft touch, knocking down the corner three that hit the rim. The backboard hit everything. Yeah, but this is a, a basketball team in Presbyterian. It's very loose, as you said earlier. Knocked off Vanderbilt from the beginning of the season. Harvey the steal, the easy two, and Presbyterian takes its first lead. Just a careless cross-court pass early in your offense. 
And again, this is a Presbyterian team that will put pressure on you at different spots on the court. Good steal, good score. Hoopy Miller found his spot and confidently knocks it down. Deeks are four for four from the floor, including two for two from deep. Samaj Teal throws up an air ball. See, there's a bad pass there. You got to come meet it. Harvey does a nice job with the finger roll and score, but he makes up for it on the next possession. Another deflection in the backcourt. Presbyterian knocks it away. It'll be Wake Ball. Little we'll crossover, gets to a spot, bam, knocks down the three. Here comes Cam Hildreth, head of steam all the way, missed it. Pretty good defense and presence from Caleb Scott. Playing bigger than six foot seven. The face mask might play something a part of it. Adds a little intimidation factor. PC ball. Foul was on Carr is first. Glad he's okay, but that kind of scared me a little bit when I first saw him. Scott from Raleigh, transferred from Georgia State. He played the last three seasons. And we got a clock issue. Should be a fresh shot clock. And now it is. Ramey Styons is leading the crew today with Clarence Armstrong and Anthony Eads. I was just hanging out with Ramey Styons down in Miami on Saturday. So it's good to see the veteran Name drop. Name drop. Early. Name drop. Hanging out in Miami. How can you say we just talked in a restaurant or something? But no, name drop it. Hanging out with him on the beach in Miami. I didn't go to the beach. The weather was terrible. <laughs> it really was. It was, it was warm. It was warmer than here. It was rainy and stormy. <laughs> Teal kicks it. Jamari Harvey from Fayetteville gives it up to Reddish Roan. Shot clock winding down. Harvey realizes it, gets it off. But it's another air ball. Presbyterian has three made field goals and three air balls among their six field goal attempts so far. I'm surprised to learn, Stan, this is just the fifth ever meeting between Wake and Presbyterian. Obviously, the Blue Hose were a Division II school for a long time. Last time these two teams met was a decade ago, November of 2013, Wake won by 21. But uh, 13 years ago today, today, we did that game, I Presbyterian think. Presbyterian came here and won. Yeah, yeah. I think I want to say that. Yeah. If you're Presbyterian right now, you, you want to try to find a flow defensively. To make make Wake Forest uncomfortable. Take them out of their offensive rhythm. They're going to the car early. Silas can beat you off the bounce. Good team defense. We hear you talk about finding your flow offensively a lot. Hildreth absorbs the bump and finally gets the foul call on Scott. We're, we're going to break here, but on the other side, I'm curious to hear your elaboration on how you find your rhythm defensively. One point game early. You mean Wait, like talk about it? You mean like talk about it? Through 13 games, they've already won more than last year. He's making progress. Making least. progress, and wow, did you really find that out that first game of the season when he went up to Nashville and knocked off Vandy. Now, if I was to tell a story about my pal Jerry Stackhouse, now that would be name dropping. But just saying that I saw Ramey in Miami, that's not name dropping. No, it's not, but I could tell you a story about my pal Jerry Stackhouse at Kinston High School back in the day, too. Okay. So what you want to talk about? I would love to hear that story. I didn't tell TV, we talk about the Presbyterian in Wake Forest. But I would like to hear about your Miami stuff. <laughs> Can you elaborate what you meant about finding a rhythm defensively? Oh, we're back to elaboration again. Yes, it means you, you're playing defense with communicating, you're talking, you're moving your feet, you know, your head's on the swivel like they're doing right now. Everybody, every time the ball moves, you're moving. And they made the shot, but they had to work hard to do that. And when everybody's communicating, everybody's moving and talking, moving the pass, good things are going to happen for you defensively. Sometimes good offense keeps good defense. Exactly. And that was a good situation there because they did move the defense from one side to the other. And they to the corner. Hill drift for three. And he was fouled. But that was bad defensive rhythm at the end. Nice job of coming out and contesting, but you never, ever follow a three-point shooter. 
Marquise Barnett violated that rule on that play. And will send Cam Hildreth to the line. Hildreth, an excellent free throw shooter, having his best free throw shooting season yet at 85%. And his three point field goal percentage is up several ticks from last year 33% to 39%. Here's a look at some of the improvements 21 22 to last year, and now today enters averaging. 16.3 points per game. See, Hildreth is the type of player in the day that can have a really nice game if you don't come out focused and ready to play because he's so aggressive. He's going to make some shots. He's going to dive after a loose ball. He's going to give you a second chance opportunity. He's going to take a charge if need be. Missed that third free throw, kind of off balance here. But if his hustle plays, can give you the enthusiasm. Some days when you're not quite focused on some certain things, you have his exams, thinking about maybe getting a bit waiting for a day or two for the holidays. Hildreth, four of five at the line to start today's game. Every Deacon starter has scored except for Efton Reed, who hasn't taken a shot yet. Reddish Roan dishes, Jonah Pierce rejected by Reed. That was a great defensive sequence. Hildreth all the way, plus the foul. There are a few guys better in the ACC at going downhill than Cam Hildreth. And that's my exact point of what we said a moment ago. Everybody moved on defense. Reed kept his feet, used his size, gets the block, and then away we go. Carr gets the rebound. Hildreth takes it down, creates the contact. This is his kind of ball game, going downhill, playing physical, being athletic. Those are the free throw line. You asked what a good sequence was. You saw it a moment ago. Cam making a home in the free throw line early. Here's his sixth attempt of the opening six minutes. And he's five for six. He's got seven points. And the Deeks have scored the last five. In fact, Hildreth on a personal 5-0 run. He's on a run of free throws. He's had two ball games already where he's eight, made eight or more free throws. He gets to the line because he's aggressive. He's smart. He knows how to play through contact. Crosby James can't connect on his first shot off bench. And here's Hildreth with a skip to his step. Carr looking inside for Reed, instead cross court. First touch for Parker Fredrickson, but we got an offensive foul on Efton Reed inside. First mention of Parker Fredrickson in the game moments ago for the first time. And he's coming on strong, 31 wow. points in his last two ball games. 11 out of 17 in the last four games from the three line. And you know what it is, Tim? He's very comfortable. He's getting comfortable. He's understanding the speed of the college game. You got that inside game. You got the mid-range game. That Wake Forest has. You get him knocking down threes. Loopy penetrating. This Wake Forest team is going to be a tough out. There's game. still a Damari Monsanto exactly. factor that could be coming, although he's not practicing yet, so it's not an imminent return for Damari. Make hopeful to get him back at some point in January. We'll see. On the drive, pretty good defense on Teal, and it's going to stay with PC. Get the shot clock. I'll well, just reset to 20. He's down to 1.7, but that shot. Well, now Steve Forbes asked him about it. I think he grazed the rim. It was a delayed shot clock reset if it did hit the rim. Looks like they're going to keep it at 20. Not going to look at it. Play on. Well, the ball changed direction. Pierce going at Keller. Traveling violation. Wake ball. I love the fact that the bigs, Keller and Nail coming in the ball game, Reed, we've seen Carr a couple of times. They've all held their position and not tried to leave their feet and make the block. Dallas running the show with Boopy on the bench. Pretty good defense by Trayvon Reddish Roan chasing Hildreth around. Keller's the open man. Teal ahead for Stewart. Kobe Stewart, capable scorer off the bench, around seven points a game. Teal too strong on the runner. And Carr pulls down his second rebound. Carr so active. Oh, 
Salas inside. Yep. Playing without the basketball, great things are going to happen, especially when the ball starts in the high block. Nice cut by Salas. It was going to be a little contact. Didn't matter to him. Hunters two for two. Teal, double, gets it away to Stewart. Now James sees the double team hedge from Carr. Shot clock's down to five here. Kobe Stewart can't connect. Rebound tipped by Keller. Ahead for Fredrickson. Everything but the bucket. Pull up from Teal is Cash. Big swing there. Would have been 22 13. Instead, back to a four point game. I think Fredrickson was anticipating some contact there. Didn't get it. Didn't get it high enough on the glass. That was the first missed two-point field goal in Parker's college career. And a tough and-one take right there for Presbyterian Crosby James. Yeah, man, this game looked like it was about to open up for a nine-point lead, maybe bigger. ...to this year for Presbyterian might be quantified in the success they've had away from the Templeton Center in Clinton, South Carolina. Last year, they were 0-18 away from home. This year, they've already won three true road games. They're 4-2 and two away from the Templeton Center. They've beaten Vanderbilt, North Florida, Northwestern State, and VMI. And they're playing the Deeks tough here through the first eight minutes this afternoon. Yeah, they're, they're a good basketball team. A team is a program that's building, getting better. Now, obviously, that win against Vandy, you got to go back to the beginning of the season. You don't know. And they knocked them off. And Yes, there's some good things happening down in Clinton, South Carolina, and you just you just hope that uh, Quentin Farrell, who's an alum of, of Presbyterian, just gets the time to continue to build his program. Three-point play here. completed by Crosby James. Boopy Miller looking for some airspace, and he finds it. This goes inside, this nice elevation. Pierce goes up, just can't quite get all the baskets. Not a lot of space there, but yeah, somehow no, Boopy just, just found the sliver. He doesn't need a lot. He doesn't need for the set. Harvey again sees the double team. The word for Wake coming into today was that the key was going to be transition defense. They've done a pretty good job in that regard so far, but the Blue Hose are hot from beyond the arc. That's their fifth made three in nine tries. Harvey and Teal have been the big three-point shooters for this team so far. Teal's knocked down three. Harvey gets, gets one. They average just a hair below seven made threes a game. They've got five already, and it's an offensive foul against Zach Keller. Yeah, they're not going to be intimidated. Watch Keller. Got to give him some space. Doesn't give him. Just missed it by a little bit. <laughs> Got to give him some space to turn. So now... If you're Presbyterian, a team that's not coming in here intimidated, settle in, run your stuff, see what you can get. Wake still doing a nice job defensively, not reaching edge of turn. Going to Pierce, not on the same page with Samaj Teal. Third turnover for PC, matches Wake's turnover total. Both teams have seven made field goals so far, Wake seven of 11. PC 7 of 15. Hildreth blocked by Pierce. Here comes PC. James. Nope. Tip. Nope. Car the other way. Hildreth does not have numbers. And with Cam, that doesn't matter. Oh, the block at the rim denies him. Great defense by Stewart. Samaj Teal with a chance to put the Blue Hose in front comes up short. What a great block in transition, D. Got him. Offensive foul on Carr. That's his second personal. Steve Ford doesn't like the call, but he's got a decision to make. Watch this. One block there. Bam! He's got a long run. Watch see Once he turns his back, see the shoulder, see the little bow just at the end of it. To absorb the contact, gets the offensive foul. Carr and Hildreth both go to the bench, tied 22 all into the second quarter of this basketball game in Winston-Salem. Teal into some contact. Loose ball finds Pierce. 
Pops around the perimeter, and the three comes up short for James. Boopy, a blur down the court. And he had it tipped away. It'll stay away basketball. Look at Vincent and I talked about Harvey, Teal, and James. They combined for like 68 of the 88 three-point baskets that this Blue Hose team, team has made this year. So they're not afraid to put up some jumpers. They're not afraid in big spots. That would have been a big no. Oh, great pick of the pocket, Jamari Harvey. And then he has it stolen back by Boopy. But the loose ball finds Kobe Stewart. Give it, then you take it away. Yes, indeed. The holiday season, the season of giving. Maj Keel, three of eight so far, including three made threes. Amongst the trees, blocked out of bounds by Taylor. Seven on the shot clock. Efton Reed coming back in. Goes inside, got to pull up right there. Killer does a nice job of holding space. Ball goes to play. Marquise Barnett's coming back in. Playing with a one foul. Great block by Kobe Stewart. This is a nice block. Wow. Oh, Fredrickson deflects it into the backcourt. Presbyterian's going to have 4.1 seconds to get a shot off going the length of the court here. Wake's going to extend the pressure. Really get beat over the top. Yeah, that was a smart play. And then again, it's really smart because now the ball's got to be inbound the baseline. So you only have four seconds to get a shot off. Spot throw two. Teal with three, with two. Half court heave at the buzzer. Did not catch the iron. Outstanding defensive play that time by Fredrickson. Whether he's going to get the, get the ball back on the deflection or not, just to fact the way he covered it. You, you don't see defensive backs on Sundays play the ball that way. Which teams you watching on Sundays? Same one you're watching. <laughs> Marcus Marion out there with Salas, Reed, Miller, and Fredrickson. Efton Reed, the third, going to work. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, just a little bit of a cushion when he turned his back. Allows him to elevate with a little mini jump hook. Got to feel good after going 0 for 4 from the field here on Monday. Tough take, Marquise Barrett getting two. Barrett is a good athlete now. He can make some plays. He's only all freshman team a couple of seasons ago. Big South. He can play. Fredrickson in and out. Reed tips the rebound. Marion tried to keep it alive, but Teal the other way. Overshoots his intended target. Jonah Pierce. Watch this. Goes inside. Use your backside. Jump to meet it. Take your time, a little up and under, see the little mini jump. That's nice. And he was going to the rack. Wake is going to need that type of offense from Efton Reed going forward. Oh, no question about it. And what I like about it is he's going back to him to see he faces up. Keeps the ball over his head. This is a good post play. Takes your time. Double comes late. Doesn't matter. Reed finishes with a left hand this time. He didn't really need to see the spin that time because he had his defender on his shoulder. But, you know, just to elevate and jump hook, but I like the fact he's got good footwork in the post. He's showing off the left. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Obviously a huge impact in the Rutgers game in his debut. He's not been as productive the last couple, but clearly a capable interior scorer. Shot clock down to five here. And Barnett has it poked away. Miller has Fredrickson open. Set shot, good. Called it set shot, got his feet set, was in rhythm, caught it, no rush, easy floater, knock it down. Now 10 for his last 16 from beyond the arc. That ball popped up in the air, last touch by Teal. Wake basketball with here is Wake Forest head coach since 1990. Steve Forbes, the sixth head man to lead this program. Only guys with more wins than Steve through their first 100 games. Both have banners hanging here at the Joel Coliseum in their honor. 
There's Skip Prosser, went 71 and 29 in his first 100. Dave Odom went 58 and 42 on his way to winning a pair of ACC championships in the mid 90s. The last two championships won here at Wake Forest in the tournament. Obviously, there's a lot of context that could be included in that graphic, and there's no Dino Gaudio because he didn't make it to 100 games. He went 61 and 31 in his 92 games before he was replaced after three seasons. Presbyterian trailing by five, and Marcus Marion getting called for the foul. Trayvon Reddish Roan drawing the contact inside. And, and that was a needed media timeout for a Presbyterian. Felt like they were getting a little bit out of their out of their skis, trying to trying to get the home run play. Lob, bad shot, not aware of the shot clock. This time able to run something, get to the free throw line. They're, they're in this basketball game right now. And so don't do anything to help to make Wake Forest even easier than what they're doing inside. Stan, how would you characterize the steps that Steve Forbes has taken with this program through 100 games as head coach? Uh, solid. It's, it's piece by piece. He's had to rebuild the program. Consider, remember when he started the program, right? He took over the job in what, late April, early May? We were about COVID during a global so, pandemic. It, yeah, exactly. That's, you know, so you got a lot of things going on. And he's been able to build it. He knows the type of guys he, kids he wants. And guys are buying into it. And it's a fun style of basketball at Wake Forest. You're getting some solid players. Just a matter of time if we get that NCAA bid, maybe this year. But I like what they're doing. Clock winding down. Salas gets to the bucket. You get a guy like Hunter Salas that can beat you so many ways. His ability to get to the rack and score with ease. So you get those athletes now. a big possession from Presbyterian. You're right. You can feel the game teetering a little bit. Damari Harvey gives it to Pierce. Back to Barnett with six. Got the switch with Reed. Aaron kickout pass. So an off-balance shot. Harvey can't connect. Oh, great job by Jonah Pierce tipping it out. Fresh possession. Corey Mincy to the corner. Barnett doesn't pull the trigger. Andrew Carr ready to check in next whistle. Harvey to the bucket, no. Another chance created by Pierce, and he's going to get free throws fouled from behind on the offensive rebound attack. You know, it's so funny. Sometimes you ask a question, and then you explain it, and it takes a while for you to see it. Those last couple possessions, that was what we were talking about by that defensive rhythm. Everybody was moving. We were contesting shots. That was a great effort to get a back tap to keep that play going, but... This is, I, this is what I'm impressed with today, is how Wake Forest has come out with a lot of energy on the defensive side. Jonah Pierce has given Quentin Farrell's team a boost off the bench. Scored double figures six times this year. All of them have been in his last nine games. Averaging north of 10 points per game for the season. He's a good athlete at 6'9". Played over at Francis Marion for a couple seasons. You know, runs, runs relatively well. He's got some nice hands. And like you said, scored the basketball in the paint. To bring this full circle, I feel like in the, in the Odom or Prosser era of college basketball, you didn't see that many D2 to D1 transfers. Now, one of them was Mike Drum, who came to Wake Forest from Presbyterian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but we're seeing more of that now, and it's cool to see. Yeah. Because well, guys can play at multiple levels. Yeah, and you don't ever know, as I say to a lot of people. Oh, great defense by Jonah Pierce. Tumbles down on top of Boopy. They're both okay. Marquise Barnett defended well. Hits the cutting Pierce, and he's fouled. Clean block up top, the foul down below, and more free throws coming. You don't ever know the situations, and, and that's why I don't judge. You know, I, I do a lot of stuff for the CIAA. We'll talk about it in a second. But watch, this is athletic play. Cool. You know, he just goes inside, and that's that low to high that we talk so much about. And he gets up there, Pierce elevates, blocks, and comes back on. But I do a lot of games. I do a lot of D2 games. And you never know why a kid is where he is. You know, academically, athletically, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. There's some really, really good D2 teams. There's some yeah. good D3 teams. 
And I think I think one thing is basketball is so broad now that there's so much AAU, there's so much competition. Who knows why a kid is where? And so you know. Last year, former Wake Forest assistant Pat Kelsey, now the head man at Charleston, had a, a handful of D2 transfers. That was part of a 30-plus win Charleston team that went to the dance. And if, if you can play, you can play. And, you know, some guys, you're 6'1", know, you're, you're going to college, and you know, you're also going to get a growth program. Or, you know, whatever. You know, you're injured all your high school years. You're going to recruit. You know, just get a chance to play college basketball and play the best way you can. Andrew Carr can't hit the corner three. Pierce rebounds ahead for Harvey. PC with a chance to tie this thing back Still up. Still hanging around. Good spacing right there. They love to drive and score. They like to drive and kick. Where's Harvey? Where's Samaj Teal? Where's Barnett? Barnett's got the ball in the wing. This is Pierce inside working on Reed. And they got a one-point game. Jonah Pierce looking good. Remember, Pierce is 6'9", and he used his size, his elevation, gave himself an angle, and kissed it off the glass. We couldn't do anything about it. Hampton's turn. Got the smaller reddish roan on him. Back outside, Salas running teardrop. He was fouled by Corey Mincy. Timeout before the free throws. 3.44 to play in the half. Wake and Presbyterian locked in a tight one on the Thursday afternoon. Presbyterian has come to place Dan Luter. Certainly we expected that. And we got a tight one here late in the first half. Excuse me when you call my whole name out like that because I don't know who might be looking for me so it's Dan Luter. I know who that is. This is Stan here. And Samaj Teal is here. Not disappointed coming back from Winston Salem with 11 points, having a nice game. Jamari Harvey just doing some Jamari Harvey things around the rim, making some mid range jumpers. But they're going to have to score more. They're going to have to take care of the ball and shoot a little bit better if they feel like they're going to be close enough to pull up the upset. Evan Lepler? Is there a, Evan Lepler? Is there a suit <laughs> you'd like me to start using? Him, the stands here, stands here, that's all. <laughs> I say I've missed you, I haven't seen you for two weeks, and you know, you've been on, on the beach in Miami, hanging out with the officials. Again, never made it to the beach, the weather was not beach worthy. Yeah, but you shouldn't have said that, because people get stuff twisted. <laughs> Three and a half to play in this opening half. Nice. And Jonah Pierce won't let it stay down. Read the rebound. That was very close to tying this thing up. Yeah, that, that should have gone. Reed's going to take the three. Great save by Barnett. Wow. Always dangerous to do that under your own bucket, but yeah. it worked out. Found his teammate diving across the baseline into the chairs. Especially at the other team's gym. Mincy into the lane, back outside. Nine to shoot. Those materials really struggle trying to get into any kind of flow in the second and third pass. Barnett, oh, defended brilliantly by Andrew Carr. Carr playing with the two fouls. And it looked like he was beat initially, but he stayed with it, got his long stretch. Hildreth to Carr for two. That's so nice. That's so nice. That's why I like watching Hildreth play. He just goes downhill. It doesn't matter who's in the way. He's going to make a play. Second assist for Hildreth. Carr's got eight to lead the way. Kobe Stewart takes it. Makes it. Nice left-handed jumper in their win against VMI. He had two huge three-point baskets. Now his 10th of the season. But again, a guy at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, that can make some shots inside as well as outside. Good basket for Presbyterian. Six made three and a half for the Blue Hoes. Hildreth on the dribble. Salas circles it down for three. And Stewart thought he got a piece of that. Really did a nice job closing out. But Salas just too much arc. A better shooter gets all the rim, gets in. Hunter now four for five, ten points. 17 minutes played so far for Hunter here in this first half. Mincy pull up. Nope. 
fourth rebound for Carr. Final 115. Can Wake Forest get some extension on this game? A basket to stop, another basket. The reach in foul. It's the sixth Presbyterian team foul. So Deke's not in the bonus yet. Teal back in. Final 70 seconds of this first half. Jamari Harvey's coming back as well. The UNC Wilmington transfer. Mildred thought about the three. Gets closer. Efton Reed, nice job letting it go. It was going to the rim. Stewart to the corner. And on the drive, what an arcing layup for Jamari Harvey. Wow. Get a stop right there for your PC. Possession there is going your way. Good chance to get some extension. Carr can't bake it in. Gives it to Reed, who swatted on the second effort. And it'll be a jump ball. He came back down with it. The arrow belongs to the Blue O's. Quickness, quick leapers. But Stewart come from the weak side, his second big block. Not a lot Reed could do about that. Meet me at the rim. Wake has played from the position of being ahead most of the half. The Presbyterian has a chance to snatch that lead heading into the locker room. Teal to Winston-Salem State transfer. Multiple D1 offers out of high school, played for the Rams, didn't play during the pandemic season, helped him win a CI AA championship. And a foul away from the ball. It's going to be two shots. And team foul of the half and a gift given to Presbyterian a few days early. Hey. Second personal on Boopy. Looks like Carr is going to come back in the ball game. Boopy's got two. Carr's got two. And so you just don't want to run the risk anything picking up a cheap foul. Just finally 11 8, especially if the free throws are missed. <laughs> 11 points for Teal. Now 11 points for Harvey. Harvey's a 71% free throw shooter. We'll see what Presbyterian Coach Farrell decides to do. After this shot, do you pressure him? Do you, do you build a 2-2-1 two, two, or something? Make him work to get it up. 37 all. They do. It's a little token pressure. Wake with its starting five out there for the final 11.8. Again, Miller and Carr with two fouls. They don't want to get a charge in these waning moments. Back to Miller. Fakes it. To the basket. With two to shoot. He gets it up and in. Plus the foul. What a shot by Boopy. He's a magician. Yeah, and he's fast, too. Watch this. He already beat you once. Shows a little head and shoulder, then repositions himself to get the square shot and goes and gets it. Watch this. Boop, 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 basket. Beepy basket? Boopy. I could give him a ooh and E out. Beep, 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 beep. Back right, going by you. Boop, 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 I, I like the Follow boop, boop, thank, boop. Thank you, thank you. Follow me. It's like Chris. a game of Pac-Man. Well, yeah, hey. We, we, we aim to please me. <laughs> Six tenths of a second on the clock. Boopy's free throw makes Bang. it a three-point game. And if you're awake, you just don't want to foul here. A foul no. would be two free throws. No. And Quentin Farrell's going to use his use it or lose it timeout. They read on the basketball. So yeah, this is this was good. This is what we were talking about a second ago with Presbyterian had it not had to tie up. But that that's just those are those things that give you some momentum, especially in a ball game like this. Well, Wake has seven wins this year. All of them are by double digits. All three of their losses are by single digits. They lost by three, by seven, and by six in overtime. One thing I was thinking about this past week, if, if you flipped the December schedule with the November schedule, okay, where would Wake be? 
would they be seven and three? Would they, I mean, clearly they're a different team with Efton Reed. It took them a little bit to find themselves. Yeah. Remember, they were down big in the opener against Elon. And look, seven and three feels about right. You know, the win over Florida and Rutgers, but they, they're not far away from being nine and one or ten and zero. I, I didn't have a chance to think about this on the beach in Florida like you have, but. That's a good thought because LSU did a great job inside scoring the ball. Utah's got all that size and length as well. Georgia, I, I'm a little surprised they won. So yeah, that's a good question. They could be 91. LSU's not. Good spacing this time by the Blue Hose, trying to look for a driver or a cutter. Clock winding down, got to put it on the floor. Harvey doesn't get the bounce this time, and Poopy with a head of steam accelerating into the forecourt. Reed, the trailer, too strong, rebounded by Scott. Barnett working on Hildreth. Well done. Hey. Nice inside power move. Doing a great job on the glass. Last two possessions from Wake, one and done. He was giving Hildreth a taste of his own medicine, wasn't it? it That's sure what Cam was. usually does to yeah. the other team. Yeah. And when you get in there like that, you, you've got to get patient. You hit shoulder fake, you hit, get the guy just off balance a little bit, then you attack him. Surprised he didn't get the three-point play there. Second foul on Marquise Barnett. First foul here in the half. In the car for the first six points of the first half. Finish the half with eight. Hildreth throws it to the Wake Forest bench. And none of them caught it either. Yeah, Matt Woodley was open, but his hands weren't up. Man, Matt's hands weren't as good as they used to be. He didn't throw it near BJ. BJ would have probably caught it, but yeah. he would have tried to catch and shoot it. Yeah. So we know. We know what's going on. <laughs> BJ, one of the great scorers in the history of Carolina basketball. Yeah. North, south, east, west. Yeah. His uncle is Tim Grant, who used to be the longtime assistant at Winston Salem State. You think about it? Smosh Teal being around. Now who's name dropping now? I'm just telling you some history you don't know. I love it. I'm just giving you some action. Oh, Wake had a chance to secure the rebound. Instead, two free throws coming for Caleb Scott. And Efton Reed, the third, picks up his second personal. And one thing that's kind of, kind of silently unnoticed right now, Presbyterian continues to lead, getting offensive rebounds and second chance opportunities at the half. They were out rebounding Wake Forest by eight. Now 10. When they've out rebounded their opponents this year, Evan Lepler, they're four and one. Just a thought. Now, how they drop now? And Tim Grant was assistant under Coach Gaines when a certain young man from Brooklyn, New York, Hollis Queens, New York, was a point guard there after two points a ball game. Stephen Smith. So Tim and Stephen A are very good friends. You know, when they did first take a couple weeks ago, yeah. uh, they were here. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I'll drop the name there. But Tim's a good guy. Tim, 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 Vicky, Naya, Naya plays tennis at uh, Norfolk State, Honor State. Hunter Salas for two. Tough bucket for Hunter. Hunter Salas, a transfer from Gonzaga that can hang in midair. Oh! Almost. 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 Not quite. All three. There's a post up again. Trayvon Reddish Rome. Looking to repost at the three point line on Hildreth. Trying to back him down. I don't see too many ACC teams do that to Hildreth because he is tough and I'm strong and played it as well as you man, right there. We have been together too long. We got to wait for you to finish your statement. I, I got a funny feeling that Reddish Rhone's not going to win this battle. Give, give, give. See, so got wider, got wider, stayed low. Might grab the wrist. May have grabbed the wrist a little bit, but that's the type of plays you expect to see out of Cam Hildreth. And that's why, you know, he's a favorite here in Wake Forest. Nice. Nice pass from Boopy and Efton Reed, the third, throws it down. The two you don't score, the two they do, but this has got a little more momentum to it. Nice little high pick and roll. Get the big fellow involved. Nice execution, the two-man game right there. There's a roll, kept his head up, kept the ball up, finished strong in the glass. Trail on that defender there. Doesn't get there in the help position. Either one of them in the pass or either the fifth spot. 
I'm going to give up the team. Oh. Fans don't like it. We play on. That is thrown this time going at Boopy. Got past him, but missed the shot. Reed got a piece of it, and Hildreth barreling the other way. Four on two. Boopy. And somehow the rebound collected by Carr to the basket. Those plays. Those plays. Don't win ball games. Get you in the championships. The whistle was blown immediately after the dunk just to get a mop up on the floor down at the other end. Okay, now remember, this is all scramble. Ball's deflected. The length kept the dribble alive. A little head and shoulder step through, and Carr finishes. The last two baskets by Wake Forest definitely been high percentage shots. Pass cross lane. Efton Reed was ready for it. Presbyterian ball underneath. Andrew Carr is in double figures for the seventh straight game. Nice pass, but see, you got to be ready to score the ball. You got to be ready to take that up. He brought it down, and Efton Reed said, I can't wait. Look, launch. Oh, oh he brought it down and ate it all. Out of bounds, Wake Ball. Tomash Teal getting frustrated. This is not the home cooking I was expecting, and a technical foul has been called on Samaj Keel. He was chirping at Ramey Stions. Wrong person to chirp to when you've been hanging out on the beach in Florida with Evan Leopard because it just doesn't work. He ain't gonna take for a lot of food. I'm just telling you. Can't go home again, they tell you that. Boopy will take the technical free throws. And, you know, sometimes the big guy will fight back and you don't like that. The last couple of possessions have been very, very physical. And it's not worked in Presbyterian's favor. Boopy puts him in. He's now in double figures with 10. Wake has scored eight straight over the last 88 seconds. Eight straight in 88 to lead by eight. Miller gives it up for Hildreth. Carr has size on Reddish Roan. And he ran him over. Offensive foul. Number three on Carr. Trying to make this a physical basketball game. Patience in the post. Trying to get that shoulder square to go up and elevate. And you watch the contact. Good defensive base right there. There's a bump bump so you can bump. That gets you. Not mad at the call. Technical on Teal was just his first personal. And a travel called on Scott. Wake on an 8-0 run, Stan. Keyed by Stands among the 15 ACC programs here on December 21st. All the non-conference numbers mixed in. Fifth in scoring, about 80 points per game. Third in field goal percentage. I think Steve Forbes is pretty confident that his team is going to be able to score with the best of them. He's still working on the defense and all the other intangibles to be as good as they can be. Well, they're fifth in the conference in field goal defense, so that's a good thing there, too. They're, they're playing better basketball. I, I just like the makeup of this team. You know, they're, they're physical, they're athletic, they're very long, they've got guys that can shoot, and they can rebound. The, the thing I forgot to mention when I posited the idea of switching December and November schedules was mainly the dynamic as Andrew Carr knocks down the three to extend the lead to 11. The dynamic of all of December's at home. And if the team had a month to, to brew at home before going out for the tough games on the road at Georgia, Utah, LSU, et cetera. Well, you, yeah, I, I follow you completely. But the good thing about the December schedule is that now you 
feel like you've worked out all the and you can know what to expect as your game plan as the games can become a little more intense in ACC play from December 30th. We are I would getting, like to see this team go against LSU as they are now and, and also Utah. Yeah. We're getting close to Presbyterian needs a timeout territory. Oh, boy! Hunter Salas detonated! Quick shot of the other end, Jamari Harvey answers, but my oh, goodness, Hunter Salas. Go ahead and cue that up for your highlight. Okay, there's your highlight play right there, and, and we're done. I mean, that's it. No point in talking about it anymore. I'm going to shut up. There's your play. That's going to be on the season highlight reel. Oh! Flying through the hand. Reed inside, two more. You know, we just should just stop right now. Okay, Merry Christmas to everybody. Call good night because you're not going to get better than that. We well, signed up for 40 <laughs> minutes here. But we did. Game, That's so. all we got to do right now. I'm going to do it. That's nice. Hunt Offensive stop. foul on the illegal screen from Caleb Scott. Here's your look. Man. <laughs> And, but the great thing about it, I don't know if you can see Hildreth running down the floor holding his head like, oh my gosh, what happened? There you go. Can, can I bring up something else you can bring my weekend it, without you getting angry with me? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. I mean, it's not, it's not I don't, I don't know if you've watched Wooga Poplar play this year, high flyer for the Miami Hurricanes, but he's got crazy hops. And I asked him after the game on Saturday if he worries about hitting his head on the rim. Goofy Miller for three. <laughs> He said he doesn't worry about it because he thinks it'd be a really cool highlight if he did. Right? Not worried about the impact. Hunter might have the same problem. I don't disagree with you for once in your days. I actually agree with you. That's what we're thinking about that in too. Back to back baskets by Presbyterian. Nobody seems to even be worried about that now. Maj <laughs> Teal with 13. Amari Harvey leading the way for PC with 14. Hunter Salas. <laughs> this move couldn't finish. Pierce the rebound ahead for Teal. This place is still buzzing. And reaching foul. Is it on Reed or Salas? Number four, the big fella. Number three, on Efton. Can we see that dunk again? I mean, I just, just because. I don't know if our guy is making control it, knock that out again, but I mean, just. Just to look at the beauty of it. I mean, you know, the reindeer don't have nothing on that. <laughs> the reindeer won't get a bit high in some places. Harvey, step back. Barnett, dribble it off his foot. Yeah, and, and this, not to keep talking about it, but it's a great play. But that was like the knockout play. Because now you're seeing that there's no bounce in the game of Presbyterian. They had the four. They're not thinking a couple of shots, but they're forcing shots. And they're just like, what? Just 18 to 4 run since we were tied 40 all. Salas fouled by Barnett. Sixteen foul on Presbyterian here in the second half. Third on Marquise. Kobe Stewart back in. Arnett staying out there, though, despite the third foul. Trevis, uh, Trayvon Reddish thrown to the bench. Wake five of its last six. Deep three, Boopy buries it. All of a sudden, wake by 17. It feels like we've seen this script a bunch of times so far this season at home. Oh, Ethan Reed! Enter the paint at your own peril. <laughs> Watch Boopy. Finds a spot, knocks it down, gets back. Yeah, yeah. And then the big guy says, okay, watch this. Watch that. With ease. Third block for Reed. To the corner for Stewart. No good. 
Offensive rebound, put back, wouldn't go for Barnett. And here's Fredrickson ahead of the pack. Salas lays it for Miller, thought about it. About 30 feet. Salas puts his defender in the popcorn popper and scores two more. Wow. That pass deflected out of bounds, and it will be Presbyterian Paul. St I you wanted to see the dunk again? Do, Let's I, see it again. I, I, I do. Everybody else wants to see it again. If the reindeer in a couple of days can get up this high, you're going to have a nice Christmas. He's had a nice Christmas. Hunter Salas. In case you did not know. Four guys averaging between 15 and 18 points per game. And similar story today. Salas, Miller, 16 apiece. Carr with 13. Cam Hildreth on his way to double figures. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No question about it. 23 to 4 is the Wake Forest run over the last 6 minutes and 12 seconds. How have they done? Defense. Defense and then making a special play. The block shot, the dunk obviously by Salas. They're holding Presbyterian to 25% in the second half. They were 3 of 12 before that basket. Third field goal of the game from Marquise Barnett, who we talked about in the open. He's averaging 14 points per game. He's got six. 63-46, and add more highlights to the reel. Andrew Carr on the receiving end. But it all starts with a nice pass and a great screen on the weak side. Carr had the easy job, catch and finish. 15 now for AC. Dallas got his hands in the cookie jar, almost stole it away. <laughs> got to give it up. Too much dribbling right now for Presbyterian. Fredericks in the steal. You can feel that coming. Salas, look out below. I'm glad he laid that up. More modest yeah, finish yeah, that I'm time. I'm glad he laid it up because, you know, <laughs> when you've been perfect, you can't really get any better than that. <laughs> Friendly roll for Kobe Stewart, his second field goal. I like Kobe Stewart's elevational shots. I mean, he, did, he averaged about seven a ball game. But his size, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and then that left hand. He gives some people some trouble in the Big South. Big South is, is really good right now. Yes. Maybe better than it's been. Longwood's playing well. Winthrop's good again. High point with their new coach. Poopy Miller, meanwhile, pretty darn good start to his Wake Forest career, 11 ball games in. The speed, the ability to beat you off the bounce and then just elevate. Poopy Miller, count it. I don't know if you remember the, the first half of his first game against Elon when he looked kind of all out of sorts and Krasl yeah. turned it over a bunch, but ever since that Halftime break, he has been steady, solid, and often spectacular. Well, you remember he only played, what, seven games a season ago yeah, not transfer in Central Michigan, so if he did, it was that many. So, he, yeah, a lot, a lot of things. That's a great point. But his, his athleticism, his understanding of the game, I mean, you, know, you, you don't worry about a guy like that because he's relentless. 19 points, one point away from his fourth 20-point game of the season. He's had a nice season already. Led his team in assists seven different times. Gives you, gives you that defensive tenacity. There you go. Efton Reed, the block, is fourth of the game. Miller up high. Oh, my goodness! Are you kidding me? Merry Christmas and a happy new year. <laughs> Hunter Salas. See if they give Reed credit for another block. Oh, man, man, man. I hope somebody got a picture of that. There's your Christmas card, the long one, right there. Oh, my goodness. Carr padding his rebounding stand. Man, man, man. Listen. <laughs> After the last two seconds, anything you do is going to be anticlimactic to me. I'm fine. 
Boopy now with six assists in the game. None more spectacular than that lob to give Hunter his second Showtime slam. Presbyterian continues to hit some shots, but they are being outscored wildly here in the second half. It was 40 to 40. It felt tight, close and competitive. And all of a sudden, Wake just continuing to fly away with it. Parker Fredrickson knocked down his second tray of the day. And poor Presbyterian, you know, I'm saying they just, but they were in the ball game. They were fine. And then all of a sudden, boom, bam, boom. <laughs> you remember the highlights tonight, I can tell you that. Get your picture in the paper. Here we go. And one for Vinci. Freshman from East Point, Georgia. Wow. We haven't seen the replay of the alley oop yet, have we? No, it's in my, it's in my mind. I, I won't forget it, Tessie. What we should do is, this will be something they can work on between. They got 8072. They should do a split screen. And then fans at home, you should call, or text, or email, or tweet, whatever you do, X, and say, which one do you like the best? It'd be great content. Let everyone know your number so they can text you and let you know. Oh, you know, you know. <laughs> you know better than that. Talk about wait for the, the production staff here. I want to prove. Give him something to do. <laughs> okay. Three point play converted by Mincy. He's got five in the game. Under eight to play. And not to mention, Frederick been knocked down a three while we're still buzzing. Hildreth to Reed. Big fella. Nice catch. Thank you for the pass. Let's get another one right down the floor. Reed, the fourth deacon in double figures. Only six deeps have scored today. The starters plus Parker Fredrickson, but that's probably the way it's going to be, at least until Damari Monsanto comes back. And Wake can win that way in the ACC this year. Crosby James splashes one down from beyond the arc. Or is that big for Mr. James? And a couple early. Reed, reach in foul, which means we're going to a timeout and a break. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride, Stan. <laughs> All right, here we go. Enjoy. We have liftoff. <laughs> The Deacons have broken it open here in the second half against Presbyterian, leading by 23 with seven minutes to go. And we're going to try to go split screen Told on you. these last two Hunter Salas slams. Simultaneous excellence. Let's see, the one on the left, he does a little twist at the end. The first one was the first one. We call the second know. one the alley boop. Yeah, 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 yeah you can. It came from Boopy. Yeah, I like that. You see, you catch it. No, it's boop, 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 All right, so you at home decide which dunk did you like first? The first one, which was on my right, or the second one? Either way, this is one of the few times that you take the test, you're going to get the right answer right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong. He can surpass 80 as they have done frequently during this winning streak. During the five game winning streak, they've averaged 80. They've allowed an average of 60. And it looks like it's gonna be the eighth double digit win of the year. This was a close game not that long ago. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Hunter Sells came in and said, look at that. I don't know how you get home, but I'm flying. And look, we're raving about the offensive highlights and for good reason, but you said it. Defense yeah. is the biggest factor with Presbyterian being down 25 right well, now. Well, your guards are quick enough that you can put pressure around the perimeter, and you know you've got a big guy, a rim protector in there. You've got two in there. You can make some blocks, get some deflections, and if you miss it, away we go. You see what happens on the other end. I, I like the makeup of this basketball team. I mean, wait for us. They, they're going to they're cause some problems for some people. 
Fredrickson to Reed. Hildreth. Yes, sir. That was coming. Hildreth just has a great understanding and a great knack to get to the basket. Doesn't matter where the angle is, he creates his own. Grew up in the gym. Yeah. Following his dad, who was a pro in the UK. Just every cause of that, you know, contact doesn't phase him. Well, that's the weight room. Yeah. All the work well, he's done. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's a little more physical when you go to, when you glide to the basket in Europe. You know, you just don't go and get an easy touch foul. Eight different Deacons have played so far today. Hildreth will have a chance to get into double figures as we projected that he would at the line here. Marion's played five minutes. Keller's played six minutes. Fredrickson's at 17. Everyone else is at least 26, between 26 and 33 so far. If you can get Monsanto healthy early, mid-January, and you can mix him in 15, 20 minutes a game, get him to get hot once once a week. Be a difference maker. I mean, the ACC, as I've watched it through the first month and a half of the season stand, I don't, gettable is the wrong word, but there's a thick middle to the ACC. And there's gonna be a lot of close games in the first month of conference play because no one is that good and I think Louisville and Notre Dame have clearly shown themselves to be the bottom two. Okay. But beyond that, the other 12 teams, along with Wake Forest, any given night. Well, you, you know, and you're certainly not here when you said the, the thick middle. Now I'm going to ask you, well, where is the top? I think, I, mean, I, think I, I don't, I don't know. I think not Clemson and, and UNC are the top. And maybe you could argue Duke and Virginia are in that mix, but I, I also Duke's think the second half was very impressive last night. That was yeah. I really got to see a whole game, even though I was doing work. Yeah, Kyrie, Kyrie's Proctor's health is yeah. be a big factor for that. Kobe Stewart knocked down the three. Clemson, look, we, we've seen Carolina, Duke, yeah, uh, Virginia. Virginia's going to be Virginia. Now Miami's had some moments, but they're not as good as they were last year, and I think Jim Laranaga knows that. I didn't like the way Miami played and finished the game against Kentucky a couple weeks ago. And they had an even worse second half against Colorado. Colorado's not bad. I saw them I had early in the season. She got some bigs. Loose ball. Fredrickson's got it. Now Pittsburgh is solid. Virginia Tech is solid. It's always Florida hard to play. Florida State yeah. has good days and bad days. Yeah, they they're, do. they're good sometimes. They beat Colorado. Yeah. You know, Boston College, Quinton Post is a really good big man for them. They're better than people may realize. Yeah. It's going to be a really interesting year in the league. Teal and Harvey have done most of the scoring today, but in the second half, they have not been able to find their rhythm like they did in the first. Technical foul cut through uh, Teal. Kind of hit a little tizzy. And that was about the time when we saw that high flying after back. Right on line, just short. Fredrickson gets his own rebound. You just milk the clock. Try to see what you get. Here's a drive coming. Might be another highlight. Any moment now. Entry pass deflected. Teal will take it. Third rebound for Salas to go with his 20 points and his two Sports Center top 10 worthy highlights. Yikes. Hard contact courtesy of Kobe Stewart. Andrew Carr will take a couple free throws on the other side of the break. Happy holidays, everybody. Wake on its way to a sixth straight win. Wake comfortably in front after it was just a three-point game at half. We show you the preseason poll, not because it's overly meaningful, but it is interesting to note how preseason perceptions may have shifted a little bit all the way around. I think people expected Clemson to be in the mix 
near the top, but I think Brad Brennell's team has exceeded the general public's expectation through the first six weeks of the season. But well, you and I both know that about mid-January, early February, you're going to get hit in the mouth. <laughs> you, you're going to get hit in the mouth by some people. How do you respond to that? Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Home for Virginia Tech at Boston College. Home for Miami at Florida State. Home for Virginia. The tougher half of Wake's conference schedule is the second half, yeah. just by projection. So, an opportunity in the early going, but nothing easy, obviously. Mike Young's going to bring a tough focus team in here. At PC, is not going to be a cupcake by any means. Certainly, Miami went to the Final Four last year, the Elite Eight the year before. Keel, two more. For the Winston-Salem State transfer. He's now got 17 points in his fourth ever game that he's played here at the Joel Coliseum. Yeah, John Dale, John Dale's going to give me, sending me that message. John Dale. And you showed it to me and yeah, I stole I it from that, you. That, well, that's okay. We, we, we can do that. We, we're family. We're friends. We do this. We help. We're on the same team. We're working together over the holidays. That's what we do. Say Free throws coming for Carr. Wake's going to be off fully from the 22nd to the 25th. The Deeks will reconvene on the 26th. Start getting ready for conference play. I saw Virginia Tech stand a week and a half ago. Sean Padula was out when I saw them, but he'll be back. He returned on Saturday in their demolition over Vermont. Hunter Couture became the all-time three-point shooter in hokey history. And bettering the past efforts of Malcolm Delaney and other great guards. Del Curry. A.D. Vasayo, Del Curry. Well, of course, they didn't shoot that many yeah, threes. They do, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, but you talk about shooting threes. I didn't say count. Hunter's a better shooter no, than Del. No, no, no. I'm saying, but when you talk about shooting threes, it starts there. But, uh, you know, this this is always, you know, and I, it's so odd to say this, but I, we talked about this very same thing last year. Wait, when we were playing Rhode Island, we're talking about how difficult coaches just feel this time of year. Trying to get to the holidays, you know, got, there's a hole down there. And the one thing too that, that I didn't take account is being safe. And the, about a week later, a young man at that uh, at uh, Livingston College at somewhere was tragically killed. The basketball player tried to kill him accident. You know, trying to get back to practice the next day. So the holidays, you get through them, enjoy your family, be safe, but be safe and rested come back ready to go but uh this is a crazy time so yeah i'm excited about january there's gonna be some good acc basketball and i think a lot of it's gonna be played in this building don't be surprised if things go like i think they can don't be surprised if you start seeing a number for side man. yeah i think that's very possible you know it's something that might have happened if the december and november schedules were flipped well that's true Carr, through the contact, kicks it out. Under two minutes here, Wake by 26. Efton Reed was fouled from behind on the stickback attempt. Andrew Carr goes tumbling down near midcourt. Taking his time getting up, but getting up he will. Andrew Carr, 21 points today. He is currently... 15 away from 1,000 in his collegiate career. From two years at Delaware and now in his second season with the Deeks. Like his game. Still got another year of eligibility if he wants to take it. I, I like his game. You know, talking about all the things that have happened in this game so far, and you know, I'm just looking at this that uh, Wake, the last time out shooting, let's say 60%. Worth of 70% yeah, in the second yeah, half. Yeah, and, and they've done that. This will be the eighth game that they've done that this season. So when you shoot the ball and you value the basketball and you play a good defense, you, you're going to have some good things that are going to happen for you. So. Walk on time. Vincent for Cutie. from San Diego in the game. He's got three points already this season. Looks like Owen Kometi is going to come in for the free throw shooter, Efton Reed. If he makes it, 
And she does. 14 and 8 for Efton. Four for four at the line for number four. Three blocks. Uh, more than that. Five blocks. Five blocks. We got those other two before the dunk. Yep. Five blocks. Making a difference at both ends. Rebound for Kometi. First of the season for the sophomore from Chicago. Ramo Zanka getting an opportunity to take the floor as well. Pass and cut, pass and cut. And this is Underwood. Will Underwood, freshman from Minnesota. Seen some walk-ons have some exciting moments in this building through the years. None more so than John Buck's dunk against Virginia back in the mid-2000s. Still picture Teron Downey passing it ahead. Unforgettable moment. This place was going bonkers. Was it better than the Salas dunks? It was different. It was different. Still waiting to hear what America has to say about which dunk did you like best. Holes are still open for 52.9 seconds. Let's call it 53 seconds. Kevin Dunn gets an opportunity to take the court as well, replacing Marcus Marion. 23 second difference, game is shot clock, so a walk on will have a chance to get a shot. create a memory here. Get a shot. Look forward to following this Presbyterian team. They've got a lot to be proud of. Mercuti had a good look. It will go the other way, though. Reflected out of bounds. Last touch by Waite. According to Clarence Armstrong. Steve Forbes with a grin on his face. Steve Forbes will begin his second 100 games at Wake Forest with a win. Now going to be 58 and 43. Through 101 games, Dave Odom was 59 and 42 back in the early 90s. I saw Dave here a few weeks ago. Not sure if he's here today. There's Coach. He's here always. Every day he's here. Every day, yeah. Oh, congrats. Speaking of that, congratulations to Mr. Wellman and the Randolph Childress for being inducted into the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's, that's it came cool. out the other day, and uh, hey, great. Randolph's up here looking down on his son's place, too. So, hey, that's a, so that's a great honor. Geeks are rolling these days. Steve Forbes going to let him shoot? He may know. I don't know. Abramo Zanka looking for his first collegiate points. Yeah. Out of bounds with eight tenths of a second to go. It's going to be six straight wins, all by double digits for the Deeks. Underwood at the buzzer. No dice. But a very merry pre Christmas victory for Wake Forest 91 68 over Presbyterian.